Okay, everybody. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and kind of get us started here. First off, welcome to all of you. You look good on a pretty day. None of you have too much of a pollen glow to you. My car, uh, I notice, is yellow, and that's not its normal color. So it's kind of a spotted yellow, which means it's outside and you got a sprinkle or two at some point. We had a pretty day. We appreciate you sharing the evening of it with us. Um, we have, uh, I know some of our folks who are normally with us here who I might just mention for you guys to be aware of. Miss Ruth is dealing with uh, some health things, so please keep her in your prayers. Um, Larry and Sharon are... <clears throat> out of town visiting their son, so they're okay, but they're away from us uh, today. Um, we have several things that I'd like to announce, uh, <clears throat> partly for the benefit of any of our, uh, of our live stream class that we have, several of these things, so please uh, be aware of these activities. One, Saturday is the first Happy Hollow cleanup and work day of this spring, starts at 9. Saturday morning. If you're not able to help Saturday, there's another one May the 11th. And uh, they're clean up work days to get ready for a very busy summer and all the activities of summer. So be aware of that. Uh, also uh, on Saturday the 20th, the men's fellowship time. I think it was announced Sunday that this is warm up for Happy Auto Cleanup Day it's from 8 to 10 here at the building. And coffee and donuts and fellowship and friendship, <laughs> fellas, for that one. Uh, tomorrow, the, the uh, Thursday ladies class meets. Linda Courier is doing the lesson this time, and it's on the Kingdom Divided. Um, I think after tomorrow, uh, that class is going to take a break for a little while, so they'll make further announcements about that. Quilters at 9, card makers at 9.30 tomorrow. Um, you guys noticed that uh, Travis made an announcement uh, maybe both times Saturday but at least or Sunday but at least Sunday night about the, the job description that's out on the table out there for your review. Pick one of those up and let the elders know of any additional comments uh, if you would. Um, a week from today, uh, Ann Thiessen and Michelle Hewlett and John Ewing are leaving as a part of the group that includes Mark and Ginger Thiessen for their mission trip to Malawi. They'll be gone April 24 through May 11. So please be remembering them in your prayers on a daily basis. And uh, Michelle still has to make John's to-do list while she's gone. That'll be a long project on its own there. Uh, April the 27th, Saturday, the April the 27th is the 60th anniversary um, uh, celebration for Fairhaven Children's Home. They're having an open house. It's from 10 to 2 that day. Uh, so please stop by and uh, let them know that you appreciate not only the current staff there, but all of the people who have served um, uh, in that work over, over 60 years. That's a, a long time. Um, the ladies' tea, that I need to mention this. Uh, it's on Saturday, May 4th. Erica Ewing Richardson is the speaker, ladies. Uh, the theme is Living Hope. And... Uh, there, there are two announcements about this. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that activity. I mean, for, for that day on the, bullet, on the table out there. There's also another sign-up sheet for one of their fun things they do for that day. It's a table centerpiece contest to show creativity and uh, whatever elements you choose. So. A living Hope, and it's uh, sign up that second list for the 27th. 
or sign up for all of that for the 27th so they'll know how many to prepare for. Uh, they are needing four inch tall jelly canning jars. If you don't know what that is, there are samples of that on the table out there too. And uh, I don't even know if they have to be washed, but you guys can bring one if you bring that if you can. That'll help them out in some of their projects for that day. All right. A lot of activities. We're grateful for each one. We've also got the graduate reception coming up. If you have a graduate in your family, either high school or college, and you haven't, let us know about that yet. Please contact Sandy and let her know about that. I think we know most of them, all of them, but in case we don't, help us out in that way. Any other announcements or activities or people to be remembered in our prayers or anything like that? Anybody? All right. Consult the bulletin for further uh, names and, and dates and all that kind of thing. Gene, do you mind to lead us in our prayer tonight and start in our class? You all bow with us, please. Hello, fathers. We're thankful for this day, this opportunity we have to come together with Lord's kids and study. We ask you to watch over those who are sick, especially as you get a very help us through the tough times we're going through. We have not lost it. I'll pass to all the others in our congregation that are sick. Watch over them, especially the Lord, their nursing homes and our shut in hospitals. <coughs> Help him to feel this in his hand. <clears throat> he laughs at his hand. He has to also be a mission trip that they go to Malala, help those men, and that they may have to take a trip over tonight and may have to be able to do much good while they're there. Also, ask you to do related activities coming up. They may have to be successful and have them have a good time doing those things. He has to also give the men in the short term. Give us all the strength to be a good example. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gene. All right. The grace of God is like uh, the a refreshing shower on a rain shower on a on a dry time or a hot summer day, and it's like the the warm sunshine we've had today in the spring, spring day like this. It's also the thing that allows us to process the, the way life is and to do so positively and hopefully. So I want you to think for a minute, uh, those of you who are lovers of the New Testament, that includes all of you, or you wouldn't be here probably on Wednesday night uh, with us. But think about the letter that we call First Peter. Uh, if you had to sort of um, tell me what you think the theme of First Peter, generally speaking, is. How would you, uh, there's not one right answer about this, but how would you summarize it when you think of that letter, there are parts of it that most, uh, some of you could quote a verse or two here and there. What would be your best summary of the theme of 1 Peter? Any, would you make any effort at that? Any, any stab at it? All right, that is a, I'd say that's as good as any, a cross shaped life. Uh, the, the idea that Christ has done something that is our example. And that we, uh, and, and that's what it says in chapter 2, uh, about halfway through, toward the end of the chapter really. But that's, that's an ex a good example of this. To meet the challenges of life by, by uh, the example of the Christ who has suffered for us and has been raised up. Any other efforts to summarize this letter? All right, Christ is a cornerstone. That's one of them. Chapter 2. Uh, Verse seven and eight that happens. I like uh, I like especially chapter two and in uh, verse nine gathers together all the terms for the people of God from the Old Testament. 
people for God's own possession, that you may show forth the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. I think that's a good effort at it. But the, the, the theme of, uh, of hope is in this letter a lot. Um, and the idea of uh, why we have been called or what we have been called for, it's in this letter a lot. Uh, how to handle suffering that comes along because you're trying to follow the Lord. That's a big part of this. But this phrase here is from the letter and, and it's, uh, it is a good way to, uh, to maybe summarize an important plank in the, in the building of the house of grace that we've been uh, uh, trying to observe uh, through these several weeks in our class. And what we've, what we've tried to do is to say the grace, God has always been gracious. It's never, there's never been a time when God wasn't God in that way. But we've also said the, the gospel is the announcement of what the grace of God means and does in His purpose in the life of His people. And over the last uh, seven weeks, we, uh, that's what we've tried to do. And I want to summarize this again. Sandy, I want to stand over here so you won't. Okay. okay. Um, I'll move this way. So you, here, uh, here, here, here's what we've said. Salvation from sin is by grace uh, through faith. Uh, it's a faith which is active and obedient, of course, but it's by grace through faith. Relationship with God is in grace and life with God is under grace. We read from Romans, remember, five, chapters 5 and 6. Grace remains in action in the Christian life. In a Christian's life, the grace of God continues its, its work, its ongoing. The grace of God trains His people how to live, what to say no to, and what to, what to pursue in our lives. There's a continuous process of growth in grace, uh, or growth, growth in God's grace, Recipients of God's grace are stewards of grace. And then this last one is tonight. Um, and this is from 1 Peter. Hope is to be set on the grace that's still to be revealed. And I want to suggest from 1 Peter that this is as good a summary of Christian living or of the purpose of Christian living uh, as there is. What Christian living is about is setting our hope on the grace that still is to be revealed. Um, there's a passage uh, in Romans that says, from faith to faith. Uh, but in, in a way, the Christian life is from the grace that has been already revealed to the grace that's going to be revealed. We saw that in Titus 2 also. Do any of you still have a, a clock or a watch that has to be set? Or do you? Uh, does your phone just do that for you? Do you not have to get up at 2 a.m. on, on uh, the, the day we move to daylight savings time and set all your clocks? Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, all of them. All right. My, uh, mine. Has, how many of you have set your? You know, my my like my clock in my car. Uh, I never, I never change it. Um, I figure it's easier to add or subtract than it is to change it. You know. Okay. I, I don't know if it's right. Or not. <laughs> I'm here, so I guess it may, may have been. What does it mean? What do you do when you set it? What does it mean then to set our hope on the grace that's to be revealed? When you, when you set your, whether it's a watch or a clock or anything else, 
you're changing it based on what? On what is going on. All right. On, on what it's, uh, you have something by which you said it, which it, which you want for it to be going forward. So you set or calibrate or, or otherwise tune something in your life to something outside of your life that you want your life to operate by. Does that make sense? So uh, like the, uh, what is the official time? The, what, what, do we, what do we call that? The, the time that we, uh, there, is a, there is a clock or there is a time there somewhere. What is it called? Greenwich Mean Time. There you go. I've heard that phrase. So, so we, we, how many, none of us have ever seen it, I, I assume, but, but we believe it exists. Therefore, we set our timepieces by it. And that's a, a, that's a simple illustration to say God still has something of His goodness and kindness that He's going to reveal. We, and you and I, in the process of Christian living, are setting our lives, our hope, based on that in a world which is not that way right now. And that's the way in First Peter, that's the way um, Peter talks about Christian living. Even though this is a very practical book, and even though it's about uh, uh, the cross-shaped life that Barney mentioned, and it's about showing forth the mercies of Him or the excellences of Him who called us, the, the way it's described... Is 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 this way? So I want us to, I want us to pursue that for a few minutes tonight to make it, hopefully something that you can follow and maybe mark and remember. Even I want to call your attention to the seven places in First Peter where the grace of God is the the operating principle that's that that, that is brought up here. First off. Look down in chapter 1 and verse, uh, since I mentioned it Sunday, let's start at 8, but let's read through um, verse 11. 1 Peter 1, verses 8 through 11. Scott, would you read that please? Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ. And glory. All right, so let me let me say it this way here for our purposes here. Um, the grace of God has to do with what has been uh, preached to us. It goes ahead to say in verse eleven that it was revealed to these prophets, <coughs> and. Um, but it was it was not for them at the time. It was for us, to whom the gospel has been preached. If you look at the end of verse twelve, now the 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 grace of God has come to us. Notice there in verse ten, it has come to us how. All right, the prophets prophesied about it, but in verse 11, it has come to us how? 
through the gospel. They, it, it was announced unto you through them that preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, sent from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Now, please notice that in chapter one here, the subject has been the the living hope, the the inheritance that is laid up for us in heaven. How we are, uh, how we are guarded. Uh, by the power of God for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 5, notice that carefully. Salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You come on down here to what uh, Scott read then in verse 10 concerning. uh, Verse 9 talks about the end of our faith, which is the, the object of it, the goal of it, the salvation of our souls. Which salvation the prophets sought and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come to you. Now, uh, this, this, uh, the prophets testified at the end of verse 11 beforehand of the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories, the glories that were to follow. The suffering of Christ, the glories to follow, and the salvation that's offered to us through that is because of God's grace. Now explain to me for a moment what that means. We've talked about it as we've gone along. What what have we tried to say that grace means? All right, a gift. A gift means that it was not earned or achieved or anything like that. Remember, we've tried to say it. Grace is receiving what you need but do not deserve. Right? So this was God's idea. The prophets themselves didn't get it all. They didn't, they they wondered about it. They des- desired, they were eager to see what it meant. Angels desire to see what it means. But the grace of God has come to us and it has to do with the salvation of our souls which is still to be revealed. It has to do with the inheritance that's laid up for us in heaven. It has to do with how God, with the blessings God still has in mind for His people. Now that's where, that's where we start. Um, grace is God's Intentional, loving action to deal with the human condition, which 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 was we we live in a world where there is sin and death, and unless God does something, then then we are simply dying. Not because uh, God is getting in even with us, but because of the consequences of sin being in the world and separating us from God. God has done something to deal with our deep need. All right, now, yes, Scott. One of the things you were talking about the clock in your car. Yeah. That, that you don't set it. The clock in my car is set about five minutes fast. And every once in a while, well, then they'll say, you know, you really ought to set, set that clock. And I said, well, but, see, that's bargain time. Because, you know, <laughs> if you're not early, you're late. Yeah. Okay? But, you know, the thing is, is when we set our, when we set our clocks, you know, when we set our clocks, a lot of times we'll use our phone or something yeah. like that. Well, you know, the time that's on our phone, you know, I mean, it, it's controlled, you know, elsewhere, but yeah. but it's it's considered to be the, the, the perfect standard, yeah. okay? And so, to me, when you say the hope is set on the grace to consume, part of it is that, that, that our lives, that our lives have to, have to be set, they have to be changed so that they conform to to the, the image yes. uh, of Christ. Yes. Recently, at the end, end of one of our classes, I think it was Barney who mentioned, uh, 
from 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 18, where looking, looking at, the, at the face of, of God and Christ all the time, we are gradually being renewed into that image. And that's, that's what we're talking about here. Hope comes from being focused enough on, you know, based on what God already has done for us, that what He has in store for us is even better than we ever could guess. I mentioned that Sunday, or tried to. And therefore, <clears throat> you know, there, there's enough that goes on in the world around us that if we are not continuing, continually resetting our lives on what we expect, on what's perfect, on what's reserved for us in heaven, then it, life can sure work on you, and the world can can kind of kind of uh, kind of make the image fog, foggy or or worse, right? And so that's that is a very important uh, thing. Uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, a process of renewal in a way that goes on all the time. All right, let's 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 look at a little further here now. Next, we learn, uh, and this is the passage where that phrase it comes from. Look at look at verse thirteen, and really, let's read uh, thirteen through sixteen, First uh, Peter chapter one. Um, someone want to read that for us? Sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Okay, thank you, Ginger. Now, can you all look at that and see ways of different ways of saying what we have mentioned here? You have you and I have options in, in what we set our minds by. Um, and and Scott was talking about this a minute a minute ago. It, it could be set on uh, we could be conformed to our former lives. Yeah, that's one possibility. We could be conformed to the world around us. That's another possibility. Or we could set our hope perfectly on on the uh, on the grace that is com- that is to come. So uh, <clears throat> perfectly means uh, set your mind more uh, more fully uh, on on uh, the grace that's to be revealed. Uh, that idea, I think, is what what Peter is saying. Set your set your mind fully on the grace to be revealed. How do you look at this passage now and see if you can see any clues about how to do that? How do we? How do I? I wish my mind were like the phone that Scott was mentioning there, where where you could just say, I'll, "I'll walk around daily and it'll just happen." But what can you see in that passage that might show me how to set my mind more uh, or, or perfectly, completely, fully on the grace that's to be brought at the revelation of Jesus Christ, David? I have hope. And knowing that we have hope in Him, but we also know that we have to do something on our part. That we have to study His Word. Okay. Live a life All right. according to Him. All right. One thing is, uh, if if I'm going to set my mind more fully on the grace that's to be revealed, then I have to expose my mind on what to, to what God has said He's going to give or to make known. In this same chapter, remember. I, he's laid up an inheritance, uh, incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. So I need to, I need to take that into my mind every day, uh, you know, regularly, so that I can 
That can be what my operate like the like the operating program or the operating system on a computer. Um, um, it needs to be tuned to it in that way. What else can you see in this text? Verse 15 is a, holy. all right. As he who called you is holy. So I want to read the Lord's word to know what my father is like, to know God in order for my hope to be, or my mind to be set on the grace that's to be set my, I put my mind up here, but my, by my mind, I mean my hope or what I expect or what I desire, or what I, what I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm living for <coughs> is part of it. And then uh, the other thing uh, about this is the it says to be sober or be... Uh, how else is that translated in verse 13, beginning of the verse? I, I'm reading the, the old American standard here. All right, it says sober also. Sober. Some of them will say sensible. Uh, some translations of the same word in other passages say self-controlled. Uh, the idea is that what I know about my father and what I see that his word says, then I want to bring my behavior in line with, Dave. All right, 2 Timothy 2.15. That's, tells us what to do. that's, that's, that's right. That's, that's, uh, uh, that is a give diligence and the, in the, in the handle the word of truth right. To know the word of truth and to use it in that way. In this same passage, it goes ahead to discuss this more perfect, more, more fully in telling us to, uh, to uh, if we call God our Father, to pass the time of our pilgrimage with reverence for Him, to live like people who've been redeemed. And then uh, uh, this, the last three weeks on Sunday, we've kind of used uh, verse 21, um, so that your faith and hope might be in God into that verse. And that's what you're trying to do here so that your faith and hope might be in God. All right, third step here. Uh, interestingly to me, in First Peter, the place where this begins to happen relationally is expected to be in our marriages. And this is this is not something maybe that you immediately think about with regard to God's grace, and yet when you do, this becomes the defining thing about the relationship between a husband and wife. It, the 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 whole the the if you if you think about an interchange between two people which is characterized by hope and grace you have a chance of succeeding. Hope is what you expect, what your goal is, what you, you, have, a, you have something you want and, and a, a desire plus a reasonable expectation for it being granted you. And then grace is, deals with the fact that it's not that way yet. Now, I want everybody to look with me at 1 Peter 3. And 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7 is the passage where Peter talks to wives and then husbands. And, and there's, there's a lot of wonderful guidance here, but I'd like you to notice that in verses 4 and 5, speaking to wives, he talks about adorning, <coughs> which is the uh, which involves the hidden 
person of the heart, the incorruptible apparel of a meek and quiet spirit or a gentle and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. And it says, For after this manner aforetime, the holy women also who hoped in God adorned themselves. Now, <clears throat> since we, since our faith, our faith and hope is in God because of God's grace, then where a where a, a, a Christian wife toward her husband displays a, the word for meek means a strong gentleness. It's strength and gentleness. And the quiet spirit is not talking about how much she talks here. This is the spirit where she's the calming, she's the calming influence in this, in this uh, home, this relationship. And then on the other hand, the husband, who in verse 7, who is told among other things to dwell, dwell with his wife <coughs> uh, considerately or according to knowledge, uh, giving honor to her. The weaker vessel simply is talking about physical uh, stature and, and strength and so forth. Uh, not let not lesser persons or anything like that. Don't don't abuse the passage, as being also joint heirs of what? Verse seven. The grace of life. Okay, joint heirs of the grace of life. Uh, so I'm gonna. Uh, this is the. The gentle and quiet spirit of hope which is shared by heirs of the grace of life. Now, I'm no counselor. I'm not trying to do all of that, but I'm just saying Every marriage, every home needs an atmosphere of hope and grace if it's going to flourish. However else you say it, every home needs an atmosphere of hope, hope and grace. Um, my wife has regularly had to say to me, everything's going to be all right. We're going to be okay. You know, and... Uh, and then both of us have regularly had to be joint heirs of grace. It is, uh, I'm sorry I left out the R here. It is, uh, if, a, if a husband thinks of leadership in the family, if he'll think about treating his wife like a joint heir of grace of life, meaning neither of us is perfect, both of us depend on the self-giving of the Lord. And, and if, if, uh, if, if a wife can offer the gentle, the strong, gentle, uh, gentleness of, a, of, a, of a, a spirit of hope, then that's what every home needs. I don't care what stage or what problems or imperfection the hope and grace, hope and grace, hope, and grace and hope, uh, are good, are a good partnership. If if grace could marry hope, their children would be would do very well. And um, I think uh, in that way, I think that that way, what Peter is saying is so practical here. If, if we're in the process of, we remember we've received grace and we're in the process of setting our hope fully on the grace to come, then we can deal with the human condition uh, better. Any of you guys got any comment about this or you're going to just leave me on this limb by myself? Okay.
I guess you are. Okay, look at the next the next uh, passage here that comes up in in uh, in First Peter. We'll move on. Uh, we mentioned I won't. We won't spend time much time with this, but we mentioned this last week from chapter four and and verses ten and eleven, where we uh, we're, we're we are good stewards of the manifold grace of God. I think this talks about in the church. Um, uh, this 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 has to do with the ministry or service uh, in in the church together. So the idea uh, that in all things God may be glorified. So we're good we're good we're to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And in this in this passage, I've been given something. Let me let me. Respond as recipient of grace in that way. And uh, please notice in the larger context here, verse 7 beginning, it's calling for a sound mind and prayer, love among ourselves, hospitality, and then serving together like this that in all things God might be glorified. So without going through that passage again, I just want to mention this is a crucial element. So you've heard what God's done for us. Uh, our hope is the salvation of our souls. You set your mind, you set your hope more fully on God's grace. Practice it in your home and in your congregation. And, uh, and in that way, you can see that the entire arena of, of Christian uh, Christian living is here. Look down in chapter five and verse five. Uh, we really we can do uh, we could do it longer, but we just do it here. Five five, and this says that God gives grace to the humble. So God is still. Gives means he goes on giving. He didn't just give once, but he gives grace to the humble. Why is this important in Christian in the project of Christian living? The fact that I'm going to need God to keep on giving grace to me tells me something important about myself and all of these other projects. Uh, all these other principles. What is it? All right. Why well, would I always need it? Because I'll never, I'll never do it. I'll never be perfect at it, and I'll I'll still be a human being, and I can aim for those things, but uh, my life is not like that phone Scott was talking about. It's never, it's never set a hundred percent, just like I want it to be. And I'm, I'll always be trying. And, and like, uh, if you think of back up here, I won't always serve as perfectly as I want to in the, in the congregation, in my home life. I hope, the, I hope the overall tone can be hope and grace, but I know it's not that way every minute of every hour in either of our lives and so forth. My mind gets occupied with a bunch of other stuff sometimes. And, and so in, in 1 Peter 5, let's read uh, 5 through 7. Larry, you mind to do that? This is a great passage here. 5 through 7, 1 Peter 5. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares. Okay. Now, the uh, this this must be an important principle. Uh, God gives God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. I think it's from Proverbs 3 to start with. And then in, uh, in James, in James chapter 4, the same same thing, the same quote gets made. 
in, in, in this passage here, um, how do we deal with one another? How do we deal with the, uh, the differences between younger and older and more mature and less mature and uh, anxieties and cares? Well, he says, um, wrap humility around yourself because God gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself by casting your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Isn't one of the uh, marks of humility asking for what you need? And what did we say grace was? Receiving. All right, it's receiving what you need instead of what you deserve. All right, so you don't show up and say, God, I deserve for you to do this for me. You say, I need your help. Um, I cast my cares on you. I can't carry them um, by myself in part because you don't want me to. All right, look at the next one here now. Yeah, yeah please do. This uh, that was that yeah sure it is that'd be pretty good equipment for life yeah good Barney and I Barney and I always would just say Jesus wept yeah <laughs> even shorter but but the same thing saying the same thing if you think about it it is he cares for you how much he care for you he stood at the tomb and wept. You know, that's a, it's on, on comment, on good comment. And God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. All right, number six. This is in 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. And in this passage, the, the sequence would be, and in, in, for the purposes of our class here, uh, even given the fact that all these things are true, uh, in order to be always setting your hope on the grace that's to be revealed, you need to be prepared to cope with some of the difficult times that are going to come. I thought about having you all to list some of these, and I decided against it. You can do that in your own mind you you know what some of these things are and in these in these uh, in verse 10 of chapter 5 um, it's talking about yes you have an, an adversary who goes about like a, like a roaring lion that's verse 8 he wants to devour people still yet you can withstand him steadfastly in your faith and then verse 10. Barney, read verse 10 for us, please. But may the God of all grace call us to the throne of glory after you have suffered a while, effect, establish, strengthen, settle. Okay. Every one of those words at the end there is a picture, and they could all be translated uh, in, in different ways, like perfect could be restore. Established could be settled. Strengthened could be uh, um, um, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to reinforce or to, to make strong. Uh, but all of them suggest a need for that. The God of all grace who called you unto His eternal glory so what is the grace that's to be revealed? It's His eternal glory. And it's the inheritance that He's laid up for His, his children. So God will, uh, the God of all grace, <clears throat> will, after you've suffered a little while, remember that in Christ it was suffering and then the subsequent glory. 
this is one of the ways the cross-shaped life takes place. It's suffering and then the subsequent glory. The God of all grace uh, will, uh, will, who called you to His eternal glory will establish, strengthen, restore, whatever the other words there are. Uh, and I, in shorthand, I'll just say the God of all grace will sustain you. He will strengthen you. I don't think it's the case that everybody, uh, uh, Christians always feel like ahead of time that they're ready for these hard things to come. Man, I can do it. I'm strong enough. But I, I, I have seen some regular people over time um, be strong enough to deal with some unbelievable things that they never thought they'd have to face. And um, it can be loss or it can be disease or it can be broken relationships or it can be any number of things. But I, I think this is a wonderful promise. How do you, looking at this list here, how do you know that the God of all grace would do that. At some point, you have to go back and say, well, what has He already done? If He, if He, if, if grace has come to us through the suffering, the giving of His own Son, then what is there that He would not do for us? This is a line of thought in Romans 8 also. If he'll remember if he if he withheld not his own son, but offered him up, will he not with him give you remember that all things? Remember? And and that's the idea here. That's what Peter is saying. Now there, don't don't think that Christian living by by being resulting from and aiming for God's grace and being moved along by it, don't think that it'll just always be easy. That's not what grace says at all. Grace was costly. It, it's necessary because of the way life is. And, but, but God does not fail His people. And then... The last thing that's said here is chapter 5 and verse 12. What does this say? Brian, read that one for us. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, according to the testifying of the true grace of God. All right. Now, why would I, why would anybody ever need to testify to me? That this is the true grace of God. And to say, stand firm or stand fast in it. Why would I need that one? Why does that need to be on my list here of setting my hope uh, on the grace that's to be revealed? Why would you ever need to be reassured that something is true? There are false things. That's one thing. There, there are your adversary, the devil. One of the tools he uses to devour is falsehood. That's true. There's also doubt, isn't there? Don't you ever second guess? Ah, well, was that was that real? Oh my, just is that just wishful thinking on my part? Is that real? Or I just think this because my parents told me this. David? The human beings, and we have weaknesses. Yes. And that weakness, sometimes we doubt God, even though we know what His Word says. I agree. And we doubt Him even though we know what He's done for us. And that's, that, that's uh, okay, Barney. Thank you.
<laughs> yep. And fiery trials that they were enduring. Yeah. 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 I do. Reassurance is the right word, I think, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd say that was a pretty uh, normal condition for them. There was also a lot of grace. And, and um, what Peter is saying, there'll be times when you think about quitting or turning back. Don't do it. Stand. Stand firm or stand fast in it, which means continue in it. We've read that before about God's grace. Now, when you think about it that way, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good summary of Christian living, isn't it? If you really think about the implications of that, and it's a really realistic and it's so encouraging, it seems like to me. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I know I'm satisfied that I that we've all read these verses, and I notice in my Bible working on this today, I've marked all these verses and I've underlined grace in it and so forth. But I need to put it together in my mind from time to time too, and I I think the reset is our dishwasher at home now. I, I don't know anything about it other than I, I heard. So I walk. I, I I do put stuff in it, but but I walk by and I heard it humming. Heard it. What's that noise? And I got and finally I put my hand on it and it was something was going in that thing and I and I opened it up. There's no dishes in it. Quit humming. Closed the door back and it started humming again. And I, I asked, what, what's wrong with this thing? She said, just hit reset. <laughs> she had taken the dishes out and it was still drying them, you see. That time. And then that, aren't there times, won't there be times this week when you, you just need to hit reset and, 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 and tune your heart and your your thoughts to God's grace uh, again. I think that would probably be uh, encouraging and helpful for all of us. Appreciate you guys being in class with us tonight. Um, Brian, lead us in a short word of prayer before we go. Okay, anybody else with any prayer needs? All right, thanks so much, everybody. Brian? us here. Thank you, Satan. Love us enough to send your son to do this. Give us hope. Tell us we have reason to hope in the resurrection of your own son. We know that all of us are still on the baptism marked on us. Father, we can't thank you enough. That kind of redemption. Watch over us through the rest of the week. Help us to apply these things to our lives so that they can take place and do place. Amen. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good rest of the week. David, thanks for the second Timothy two fifteen. Hey, Susie. All right. Um, Thank you.
Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, looking out the windshield today, 